So what's the deal with the Gigabyte X570i Aorus Pro Wi-Fi and its integrated base plate? After all, there is a thermal pad between that base plate and the motherboard. In one of my last videos right before PAX East, by the way, those videos will be linked in the description below, I actually was going to build a mini ITX system with that motherboard and the Thermaltake Core V1, and I actually ran into a, a small setback, which was that integrated base plate conflicted with the case standoffs in that case. The purpose of this video is to find out how VRM temperatures are affected when we take that integrated base plate and thermal pad off the back of the motherboard. But I'm not gonna even waste your time with the processor that's destined for that mini ITX build because the R7-3700X, under full load stress test with Prime95, AVX instructions enabled along with precision boost overdrive that the VRM temperatures don't even come close to 60 degrees Celsius. So I got my hands on the Ryzen 9 3950X and we're gonna use hardware info and the built-in VRM sensor on the motherboard to see how hot the VRMs get when we place this processor under full load. All right, so here's my test bench. I am currently running the 3950X. PBO is enabled, XMP is disabled. Here's what we're currently looking at for temperatures. We have the CPU wavering at about 28 to 36 degrees Celsius, but the VRMs right now are idling at about 33 to 35 degrees Celsius. This is with the integrated base plate on. I'm gonna go ahead and start the stress test with Prime95. All right, so the 3950X has been on a Prime95 stress test for quite some time now. I pretty much kept an eye on the thermals and started this recording right when the VRM temperatures stopped climbing. So we're looking at about 73 degrees Celsius. At this point, idle VRM temperatures are starting off a little bit higher, but that's only because of my previous Prime95 stress testing. I'm gonna kick off Prime95 stress test now with the integrated base plate off and I'm only gonna stop the test if the temperatures get dangerously high or the temperatures stop climbing altogether. Okay, the 3950X has been idling for quite some time now. The back plate is off the back of the motherboard. In fact, here it is right here. All right, so here's Prime 95. We're gonna kick it off with small FFTs. AVX is gonna be enabled because the Noctua NH-U12A is a diesel CPU cooler. Let's see what happens. You can see all those threads going up and the fans starting to ramp up. All right, so here's the 3950X on a stress test via Prime95. And we have the Gigabyte X570i Aorus Pro Wi-Fi without the integrated base plate. And the VRM temperatures are about four to five degrees Celsius hotter than with the integrated base plate attached to the back of the Gigabyte X570i Aorus Pro Wi-Fi. Even though the VRM temperatures, according to hardware info and the built-in motherboard sensor, don't appear to be at dangerous levels, if you have a R9 3900 or a Ryzen 9 3950X, do yourself a favor, just leave the integrated base plate and thermal pad on. Because if you're going with high-end hardware like that, you probably shouldn't be purchasing a mini ITX budget case like the Thermaltake Core V1 to begin with. There's plenty of other options where the built-in case standoffs do not conflict with the integrated base plate on the motherboard. 